Good evening. I am Pastor Deborah Porras. I welcome you to our virtual Christmas Eve service. We are so sad that we are not able to gather and worship and celebrate the birth of Christ in person, but we continue to follow in Jesus's teaching to love one another and to care for one another. And sometimes that means making these kinds of difficult decisions. And so here we are again, celebrating Christmas from afar, but celebrating it still, gathering in celebration together, just in new and different ways. I want to make sure that you did see our posting with our bulletin for you to follow along, as well as announcements. You'll see in there the dedications for our poinsettias from our congregants. You will also see in there information about our Christmas offering. That will go to support uh, Lutheran services that's working with refugee families that are resettling, particularly thinking of those Afghan refugee families resettling into our community. So our Christmas offering will go to support that work. If you would like to give, you can give online. You can send that into the church either way. I hope that you are able to enjoy worshiping with us this evening, and please make sure you have a candle for our silent night candlelight and the uh, end of the service. I'll invite you to join together in our call to worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. God, you have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. We rejoice before you, Creator, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of our burden and the bar across our shoulders, the rod of our oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this tonight. The light of God's love is given to us, and we shall see that light and let it shine through our lives. Amen. dreamed of a beautiful world. In Egypt, the Israelites dreamed of freedom. In the wilderness, the people dreamed of safety. In Bethlehem, the sheep and wise men dreamed of a new beginning. Then, several years later, Jesus walked the earth and dream came true. 
The sick were healed. The poor had food. The forgotten and ignored were seen. The children were welcomed. Everyone was invited to the table, and the world has never been the same. So tonight, we are those who dream. Tonight, we dream the same dreams of our ancestors before us. Tonight, we dream of justice and mercy, of love, of kindness, of peace and hope. Tonight, we dream of a God that draws near to us out of unfailing love. May this candle be a reminder that there will be a day when every dream will be fulfilled, and until then, we will be those who dream. Let us worship, holy God. Please join us in prayer. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the angels sing. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the bleats of sheep following shepherds and the hooves of confused barn animals. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the innkeeper say, no room. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the star whisperer say, follow me. If we listen closely, God, we can almost hear you. So, as we turn to your word, holy writer, don't let us miss a thing. The smell of the hay, the cool of the air, the way Mary cherished this wild dream in her heart. We want to hear it all. We don't want to miss a thing. So today, we pray. Can you help us listen closely? Amen. 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 Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And her man nature sing, and her man nature sing, and her man, her man nature sing. A reading from the prophet Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrata, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from the ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until a time when she who is in labor is brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town, went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was expecting a child. While there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. This is the word of God for the people of God. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Oh, my God. 
The next reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Some of us separated from those we love. Some of us already ill. Some of us just glad that we can celebrate. However we are worshiping and gathering to celebrate this Christmas, it is definitely not how we want it. It's not as we'd hoped or expected. Yet again. Perhaps we can connect then more fully with the stories in the scripture. Perhaps we can truly imagine what it would be like to have unexpected news that turns your life completely upside down. For Christmas to be about that rather than all of the festivities and joy that we so often love. Perhaps it's a time for us to find joy in the sense that the scriptures talk about. Perhaps a different kind of joy. When we reflected over the last weeks and when we reflect through the journey of Advent on the various scriptures, we hear stories of joy in the midst of fear, uncertainty, in the midst of challenges, in the midst of disbelief, Joy that is so grounded in deep faith and in being a part of and invested in what God is doing that it overcomes even the most scary of moments. Imagine being Mary, afraid for your life, unsure what is going to happen. It's not like she's had children before. It's her first pregnancy. And it's nothing like she anticipated, and she won't have the support of the community, and her whole life will probably be a challenge. She can imagine what her child's life might be like, being God's savior, the prophesied one. She knows the history of God's people. She knows what happens to those leaders and those that are sent by God. But she's so overwhelmed with joy 
that none of that matters because she knows how important it is what God is doing through the birth of the Savior, through coming into the world in human flesh, through vulnerability, through all that happens through these stories we hear through Advent and on Christmas Eve. Mary knows what it means because she is that grounded in her faith and it leads her and fills her and excites her and drives her and guides her and comforts her and warms her and again brings her joy. Each of the people we meet in the Christmas story have this experience. I remember seeing in a clergy group as people were sharing what they were excited about preaching for Christmas Eve and one person had a string of, of jokes and one of the people said, and the shepherds were bored. And it really made me think. <laughs> None of the shepherds were bored. When we see the story, the shepherds were tending their sheep, quite busy. And if it was nighttime, they had to be on watch so that nothing came and threatened their sheep that passed by that they didn't quite see. They were busy. But they still saw God's message. They still heard, and not only heard, but responded when the angels came to visit them. You can imagine them trying to gather up all their sheep to take them along because this was so important. Everything else became secondary to what God was doing. We see the same thing for each of the different portions of the story that what God is doing through the birth of the Savior matters more than anything else. And the people who get it, who see it, who understand it, who decide, yes, I'll be a part of it. I will change everything about my life to focus on this and be a part of this story of God. They get it. And their lives are not only changed in the moment, but forever changed. And it is that sense of joy and that peace that is beginning to well up that they know is coming. That takes over. What does Christmas bring to us? What does it mean? What are we celebrating? Why do we light candles and sing hymns and share gifts and gather with one another? Because it is a time to remember that God changed the world forever. God came into the world in the vulnerability of a child to show us how to love and be loved, to bring joy Joy that comes from knowing peace is coming, from knowing we can live in hope no matter what. Joy that comes from knowing that when we cannot gather, when we cannot be normal, when we cannot live as we wish we could, God is still there with us, making a way. And Jesus is still born into it. In fact, Jesus is born right into the mess, no matter how much we try to clean it up. But we often miss it because we aren't shaken. We aren't startled by angels appearing in the midst of our evening. We aren't startled by a bright light shining, a star that is so powerful we cannot ignore it. We aren't startled out of our everyday, but perhaps we are this year, much like last year. Perhaps we can see differently. Perhaps we can hear differently. Perhaps we can believe differently. Like Mary, like Joseph, like Elizabeth, like Zechariah, like John the Baptist, like the shepherds and the magi, even the animals that took part. Like the angels, of course. We're invited into this great story. We're invited to celebrate the birth of the Savior, to believe fully in Jesus Christ. That Jesus is God in flesh, that this means that God is at work bringing forgiveness, bringing everlasting peace, 
that there is always hope, that there is nothing impossible for God. And we see that in the midst of having even greater trouble believing it, but perhaps being more open to hearing it and leaning into this good news rather than the world's clamoring around us. The word believe comes from the German word believen, and I'm sure I mispronounced that. No matter how much I practiced it, I am not great at pronouncing German. Believen, not believing. So this word doesn't just mean believe like, oh, I believe that today I will eat a cheese sandwich. It means to wholeheartedly put your trust in someone. Put your trust in Jesus. In Jesus as the Savior, as the promised one, as the one who brings forgiveness and everlasting peace, as the one who reigns over all, and therefore we can fully live into the kingdom now. As the one who comes into our hearts and lives anew this evening, this Christmas evening and day that is coming in ways that change us and transform us and, in, and enliven us in joy once again. Some of the scriptures we overlook during Advent are the ones that remind us to keep awake, that we know not when the time comes, and this is the chance for us to remember and start anew. Not in the new year, but now. To truly believe. To ground ourselves so deeply in faith that joy overwhelms. That we become more fully people of peace. People of hope, of faith, of love. Of joy. Sharing the good news, living the good news. So grounded. That when God does the impossible, when things aren't like we think they should be, we can discover something new. We can hear that whisper, see the stars shining in the sky and follow it to something new. Something greater, something beyond us, something we could never believe or imagine. You may see the Grinch. I think he just fell in the background. <laughs> but the Grinch, we journey along with this Advent as well. And we learn from the Grinch that no matter how much we think we understand about Christmas, we do not. That when you take away everything that is what we think is Christmas, that there's still Christmas. Because it's about Jesus. It's about the community that God is forming, it is about the work God is doing in redemption, in forgiveness, in hope, in love, in peace. And the Grinch has fallen down because his heart is so big. It has grown so much. And we are invited to be a part of that. In Jesus' birth, may your heart open, may it grow, may you believe truly in the Christ child, the Prince of Peace. May you look for those moments and opportunities to be a part of God's redeeming work, to remember you are forgiven and saved, to live in hope and to experience and share the joy and the love with the God who came in human flesh and the vulnerability of a child and the messiness of a stable in our lives brings anew and offers to everyone if we will only offer, if we will only receive the offer, if we can only see and live anew. Merry Christmas. May you be blessed. Amen. Now I invite you to join together in our Christmas prayer. Mighty Savior, we were heavy with sorrow, but joy interrupted. We were deep in the night, but a star appeared. We were silent with sadness, but the heavens rang, and the splendor shone around them when the night had fully come. We were hardened by conflict, but love intervened. We were frightened by shadows, but light took them away. We were haunted by fears, 
but a child brought us hope. And she laid him in a manger when the time had fully come. We were dismissed and defeated, but faith set us on fire. We were weary and complaining, but our hearts discovered praise. We were doubtful and confused, but a door to life was opened. And the guiding star went before them when the time had fully come. We were arrogant and angry, but his innocence disarmed us. We were cruel, crude, and clumsy, but his grace made all things new. We were selfish, narrow, and greedy, but his joy we had to share. And they'd offered him their treasured gifts when the time had fully come. We were sheep who had lost their way, but the shepherd knew our names. We were strangers without a country, but our kingdom came to us. We were children far from home, but God sent us his son to guide, and the word was flesh among us when the time had fully come. Amen. Wherever you are on this holy night, we invite you to light a candle and to hold your candle high as you imagine the star shining in the night sky, as you imagine Jesus being born, the light of God bursting forth into the world and warming your heart, shining brightly and anew in your own life and for all to see. Wherever you are, Light a candle and sing with us. gathered only with the newborn king or gathered with those you love, whether you find yourself longing to be together or thankful for a silent night. May you experience the joy of the birth of our Savior. May you experience the warmth of the light and the tenderness of our God in flesh coming into the world. May you experience the joy, the hope, the love, the renewed faith, and the sense of peace that we all join in Christ in working for. Everlasting peace. May it be in your heart. May it be in your relationships, in your home, in your life. And may you proclaim it 
and share it with all. Amen.